Hey there, my friend. Welcome back to the Fit Father Project podcast. Again, my name is Dr. Anthony Balduzzi. I'm the founder and CEO here at the Fit Father Project and the host of this Fit Father Project podcast. Today's episode is special and I'm super excited because we're going to be diving into the foundations of building muscle an age-defying strength for you as a guy in your 40s, 50s, and 60s. Now, here at the Fit Father Project podcast, we absolutely have a focus on helping men lose weight and lose fat. Because let's face it, if we look around, that's what most guys need. But after you lose the weight, a lot of guys want to switch their focus to building muscle and building strength. And when you're in your 40s, 50s, and 60s, there is a particular way that you need to train, a particular way you need to recover, a particular way you need to eat to maximize your results. And this is all predicated on the fact that as we get older and our bodies change, we need to match our training and our recovery strategies to the changing of our bodies. So as we age, we've heard this story before. We naturally lose muscle mass. Our testosterone levels naturally decline. The metabolic rate begins to slow. And oftentimes, for many of us, we've accumulated old injuries, from sports, from work, so our shoulders, our knees, and our backs don't often feel as good as they used to in their 20s and 30s. So that limits and makes the kinds of exercises we choose a little more specific. But there's also some things in terms of your training split, the kinds of sets and rep schemes you may follow, and certainly when it comes to nutrition, how you can gain muscle and not fat as we age. That is what we're going to cover here on today's episode. I am super excited. Now, if you're a guy and you still have some weight to lose, I highly recommend you go back and you listen to our our episode on metabolic resistance training, MRT, which is the specific kinds of fat loss workouts we recommend here at the Fit Father Project. Those are a hybrid of really combining cardio and strength training together to help you reach your goal weight. Because today's conversation is going to be assuming that you are at your goal weight. And these are the things you need to focus on with your training specifically for pure muscle building. And I also want to say this, a lot of guys I see who think they need to build muscle actually need to lose some fat and lose some weight first, because it's actually easy for our bodies to build muscle, to build up from a point when we start off lean. And this is why we recommend in our old school muscle building program, our muscle building program, specifically for guys over 40, that you start this program at minimum. I should say 15% body fat. So if you're any higher than 15% body fat, it's good to lean down first. Because what happens is when we carry excess body fat, body fat actually converts testosterone into estrogen through a hormone called aromatase that actually exists in the fat cells. So that makes it a little harder to build muscle. Also, if we have too much weight, oftentimes our body is not as insulin sensitive as possible. So insulin is this hormone that is released by the organ called the pancreas in response to eating carbohydrates and some proteins. And when insulin rises, it actually shuttles those key nutrients into our cells. And what we want is we want our cells to be incredibly sensitive to insulin because when we get this good insulin sensitivity, which often happens when we're leaner, it actually helps the muscle building process. So a lot of guys make the mistake of starting a muscle building focus when they're not lean enough yet. That's why we're big proponents of focusing on fat loss first. But once you've lost the weight, or maybe you're a guy who actually struggles to put on weight, then this is the conversation you need to be paying attention to. And even if right now you actually have some weight to lose, but you want to think into the future of how your training may be different once you get the weight off, this is the conversation you need to listen to. So I'm super excited. We're going to talk about muscle building for guys over 40. Now, when you're in your 40s, 50s, and 60s, the principles of building muscle are the same as they were in your 20s and 30s in the macro sense. And what I mean by that is that muscle building requires two overarching levers. The first one is a stimulus, meaning we need to stimulate the body through training to create this adaptive response. Because essentially the process of exercise for muscle building is that we're getting into the gym, we're lifting weights and training so that we create trauma to the muscles this kind of micro damage, and the body responds to that through this process of super compensation by getting bigger and stronger. It's kind of like this age old story of Milo who carried up this goat on his back or this ox or bull, I should say, up a mountain. And as the ox grew, the amount of weight Milo needed to carry grew. So Milo got stronger, more stimulus, greater damage. The body recompensates and you get stronger. So we need to have the right kind of stimulus or training 
And that means the right kind of training split, the right kind of rep schemes, the right kind of exercise selection. But that's only half of the picture, right? Because we can train, but muscles actually grow when we're not training. They grow outside of the gym, when we're sleeping, when we're feeding the good kind of nutrition to actually help the body rebuild that new tissue and recover. So these are the two orbs and levers that we're playing with, stimulus through training and recovery, and that's what we're going to focus today's conversation on. Now, this is going to be a podcast. I don't know exactly how long it's going to be. Maybe it's 30 minutes. This will not be the end-all, be-all, exhaustive treatise on muscle building. I'm certainly going to share with you what I think are some of the most foundational principles, but if you're a guy who actually wants to build muscle and wants to follow an in-depth, step-by-step plan that covers exercise, nutrition, and supplementation with zero guesswork, then get our old-school muscle building program. You and I can go so much deeper, and I'll walk you step-by-step through an actual program, set-by-step, rep-by-rep, meal by meal. This will be the overview though. It's going to help you get started. So let's talk about stimulus. Let's talk about exercise and how maybe your muscle building stimulus and exercise should be different when you're in your forties, fifties, and sixties. One of the main changes that happen is as we age, we actually lose some of our ability to recover from exercise. It takes longer to recover. So maybe when you're in your twenties, you do a kind of workout and then you'd be good to go two days later. But maybe when you're in your 40s, 50s, and 60s, it might be three or four days later. It's just that the recovery gets slower. The body slows down naturally with age, and this is fine. We need to accept this fact, and we simply need to work with this natural physiology change and design the stimulus so it prioritizes a little more time in between exercise sessions. So one of the first things that we love to prescribe when designing a strength training routine to create the proper stimulus is less volume in each individual workout. When I say volume, I mean fewer sets, but a higher frequency, meaning we hit muscle groups more frequently throughout the week. So back in the day, you may have followed these traditional strength training splits where you had a chest day, where maybe you did 15 sets of chest. You do four sets on the flat bench, four sets on the incline. Then you go do your flies. Maybe you burn out with some push-ups or shoulder press or stuff like that. That's a lot of sets and volume in one kind of workout. But the problem is it's not the most efficient way to train because you get diminishing returns for every individual set. And the more sets you do, you're actually just creating greater inroad into your recovery capacity. So when guys are in your 40s, 50s, and 60s, what we need to actually do is actually focus those workouts. So instead of doing a 20 set chest workout, you might only do 10 sets on Monday, and then you'll do another 10 sets later in the week on Thursday or Friday. So we're taking those 20 sets that might've been in one workout and we're spreading that volume out. So less sets in each individual workout, but greater frequency because each time we train, we get the stimulus. Our body has a protein stimulus effect. We start to synthesize new proteins and we feed the body through recovery. So that protein synthesis increase after training may last one, two, three days, and then it's time to train again. But if you've done 20 sets of chest, and you're 45, and your chest is so damn sore that you can't train again for a week, you have an inefficient training plan. Ideally, you could have done 10 sets, gotten a majority of the stimulus benefit, and then done another 10 sets a couple days later. Now you're going to get more protein synthesis almost 24-7, and you haven't created inroad to your recovery. So this is why for many guys who are actually looking to start a tailored strength training plan, we are huge proponents of starting off with an old school full body training split. I'm talking about doing full body workouts three times per week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It is one of the best ways to train. In fact, there are some new research studies showing that full body workouts, meaning you're working every single body, every single body part in a workout. So you might start off with some kind of leg motion. Then you do a back motion. Then you do a chest motion, then you do shoulder motion, and then you finish off with some kind of arms and core. And you do that Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You're spreading that volume out throughout the week. You're hitting the muscles every 72 hours. So you're getting constant protein synthesis effect. It is very, very effective. I absolutely love this way to train. So that is the first principle, less volume, higher frequency. The second principle is the types of exercises you select need to be joint friendly. And this is going to be unique to you. You probably have some types of exercise motions that feel really good and others that hurt you. 
And I'm going to just go out and say this, even though it may seem obvious, if anything causes you discomfort in your shoulders, your back, your knees, that is not the exercise for you. There are so many different kinds of exercises, machines, apparatuses these days that you can find something that feels great for you. And it's kind of unique. Like I've had so many training partners over the years, probably like 10 different training partners, maybe even 15, 20, and we all have different body types. So uh, one of my core training partners, Alex, he loves particular kinds of workout and emotions on machines. They don't feel good for me. So we don't do that kind of exercise together. So you need to find the exercises that feel good for you, the machines and the motions that feel good for you. And as a blanket statement for many guys, the types of exercises that feel better when you're 40s, 50s, and 60s are stuff using dumbbells and cables instead of barbells. And I'm not knocking on barbells because the best exercises, many of these best compound exercises for muscle building, like squats, deadlifts, rows, shoulder press, bench press, involve a barbell. And if barbells feel great for you, continue to do barbell exercises. Yet, I think there's a big benefit when you get older to switching to doing a lot more dumbbell work and doing work with cables. Because when you do a barbell bench press, for example, that bar is in a fixed bar path. The bar is connected, so your arms are connected, and you're pressing in a particular way. But if you have shoulder problems like me, then having dumbbells is a lot more natural because you can move the dumbbells in three-dimensional space a lot easier to accommodate your exact anatomy and things that feel good. Because if you have even a little bit of a nagging pain, you continue to push through it, that often turns into some tendonitis and some inflammation. Then you keep on pushing it, and then it turns into chronic inflammation. Then you need to stop exercising and taking time off, and then you're back to square one, and then you restart. But imagine this. Imagine if you started building your workouts around joint-friendly exercises from day one. You could be a lot more consistent, and you're doing stuff that feels good. And if someone's listening to this and you're not 40 yet, you're younger, take this to heart. Start doing joint-friendly exercises before you accumulate injuries. You do not want to work through nagging pain. You want to do workouts that feel good on your joints. Dumbbells are something we definitely prioritize in our old school muscle building program as primary exercise selection. Cables are also fantastic. Use cables. They're great for arm work. They're great for chest flies and chest presses. They're great for rowing because again, you can move, you get constant tension from the cable and you can move in a way that doesn't hurt you. So we need joint friendly exercises and those are going to be unique for you. You got to find the exercises that feel good. The third thing, and this is really related to the second point is that we always want to leave the ego at the door and prioritize form over weight because the muscles do not actually know how much weight you're lifting. The muscles don't know that there's 200 pounds on the bar that you're bench pressing. What muscles know is tension. And when you have proper form, you can create more tension in your chest, shoulders, and triceps doing a 150 pound bench press than 225 pounds done sloppily. So this is a good time, especially as you get older, to scale back the weight, to focus on really understanding the form and knowing how to activate that muscle to build a strong mind muscle connection to pick an exercise that feels good on your joints and focus on creating tension, which often means slowing down those reps, really focusing on slowing the negative portion of the rep, the lowering portion. So bench press, for example, you have dumbbell bench press, you lower those dumbbells slowly, maybe a three second count, four second count. You feel that chest open up. You pause for a second at the bottom and you explode on up. That rep is going to be a lot more effective at creating tension in the muscle and directed exercise so that you're actually working on the muscles and you're not straining the joints because we've all gone to the gym and we've seen guys with sloppy form, bouncing bars off their chest, and the chest is not working as much with all this momentum crap. You can create tension with lighter weight with great form. And this also leads me to another point. And I think a lot of old school bodybuilders and the guys who lifted heavy for many years now say this, and they wish they knew this way back in the day, that it is fine to train with higher reps. In fact, you should actually build higher rep days into your training split. In our old school muscle building program that our fit fathers are using to build muscle in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, we do full body training three times per week in our phase one program. And one of the things we do is we have a heavy day, we have a moderate day, and we have a light day. And what's different is the rep ranges. So on the heavy day, we might be training in five, six, seven, eight reps or so on many of the main compound exercises. On the light days, we might go up to 15 to 20. They are good for different kinds of reasons. There are a couple ways to build muscle. One of them is actually metabolically taxing the muscle, meaning you're doing a high rep set where you really feel that burn. 
that actually creates a particular kind of signal to build muscle, and it's also very joint friendly. So lifting in high rep days is a really, really smart idea. And there's actually research showing that the arms in particular respond really well to high rep work. So don't be afraid to do curls in the 20 rep range, for example. Very, very effective. And you can do your whole day like that. And what's nice is it keeps you fresh. Because if you try to lift heavy all the time and you have joints that are 55, 65 year old joints, they're just not going to take it over the long haul. And this is why you look at a lot of old school power lifters who are on multiple shoulder or knee replacements because they just beat themselves up with heavy, heavy training all the time. I'm not saying you don't lift heavy. I'm saying you mix heavy training in with light training in. And again, remember the initial principle, less volume in every individual workout. So you only do maybe each body part. You might, might do four to six sets of a body part, but you're spreading that throughout. You're getting those pulses throughout the week. So maybe you're still getting your 15, 20 sets of chest, but it's being divided up across three workouts throughout the week. That's, what's going to be most effective. Other principles that are, are certainly important and still stick um, when you're in your 40s, 50s, and 60s, is the idea of being consistent enough with your training so you're not just haphazardly training, trading, uh, doing the same split over time. What I see when I go to a commercial gym is you see the same guys doing the same thing day in, day out, week in, week out. They have their little circuit on the machines. They lift the same weight. They do the same training split. And it gets stale, and it does not work over the long haul. So what we need to balance is the idea of being consistent. We want a regimented training split. So I think from my personal experience and helping tens of thousands of fit fathers through our programs is having a muscle building training split plan for about eight to 12 weeks of focused work. So you're actually training diligently. You have an eight week plan, and then maybe you take a week off a lighter deload week, and then you change up your training split seems to be a good thing because if you, you got to balance a couple things. One, you want to do consistent enough training so that you're hitting the same kinds of motions regularly so you can get stronger on those and get progressive resistance. So if you're changing things up all the time, you don't get the benefit of, of having the consistency of getting stronger at core motions. But at the same time, after you do that for a little bit, you do need to mix things up. So that's why I mentioned our old school muscle building program. Phase one is full body training three times per week, but that's not the end all be all split. Do you know what works really well after full body training? Doing more specialized split, something like push, pull, squat. So maybe you have a chest, shoulders, triceps day. Then you have a back and biceps day, and then you have a leg day. So these kinds of training splits are really good. You want to mix this up throughout your calendar year. So you're keeping your training fresh. And again, as a rule of thumb, about two months of doing a particular kind of split is a really good time to build some strength, to build some muscle. You take a deload week, which is a light week where you either take it completely off or cut your weights down tremendously, or just do some basic body weight stuff to allow your joints to recover, give yourself psychologically a little bit of a break from heavy training, and, you, and then you plan your next training split through there. And our old school muscle phase two and phase three programs give you different kinds of training splits. But I want you to get the big picture here. I want you to understand some of these principles. The progressive overload absolutely matters that you get stronger. Our most successful fit fathers, hands down, are guys that actually track their weights every single workout. They go in knowing exactly the exercises they're going to do. So let's say you're on old school muscle phase one. You know the five motions you're going to do that day. You know your rep scheme. You know what you did last week. You know what you're planning here. And what that ends up doing is, is leads to really effective, engaging training because you go in with a plan. You nail the warm up. You nail your working sets. You get out. And then you know exactly what you're doing on Wednesday. You're tracking things in an old school journal, in an Excel document, whatever it is, you're focusing on getting stronger as the stimulus. And then the muscle continues to build as a byproduct of progressive overload. So quick recap, stimulus is the training. And what we want to do is make sure it's joint friendly. We want to spread out our volume. So less volume in any given workout, spread that throughout the week. With that higher frequency, training each muscle group two, if not three times per week on a full body split, for example, you want to use more dumbbells and more cables and at the very least, making sure that all of your exercises are stuff that feels good on your body uniquely. And if you can't do something anymore, because let's face it, putting a barbell on your back to do squats just doesn't work for you anymore. And you have to use the leg press. You have to do leg extensions. That is fine. That is your new normal work it. You can still make incredible results using any kind of thing that feels good for you because the muscles know tension. 
So if you can create tension in a joint-friendly exercise, you can add weight over time, you can progressively resist, you can make gains. But we all know that training is just one part of the equation, right? It's the stimulus. We also need to have the repair aspect. And as we get older, repair naturally slows down. So it's even more important we do everything in our power to actually really invest in repairing and recovering from exercise. And the first most important thing you can do there is get amazing sleep. A lot of guys, as they get busy in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, allow bad sleep habits to creep in. You stay up late watching TV. You don't get enough sleep. You have caffeine in the morning. This is seriously going to impair your muscle building results. If you are not getting a minimum of six, but ideally seven plus hours of quality sleep, where you wake up refreshed, your muscle building is going to be suboptimal. Now, there is individual variety to how much sleep each of us need, and you got to figure that out what it is for you, but I'll tell you this, it needs to be a priority in your mind to get extra sleep if you're in a muscle building phase. Your body, while you're sleeping, increases growth hormone, and during deep sleep, repairs all these tissues, and especially your ligaments and your joints, which need to be healthy, because if you're wearing those down, I don't care how long and hard you trained, eventually you're going to run into some kind of injury, which could set you back for weeks, if not months. So sleep is paramount. We're going to do an episode very soon specifically on sleep. So that's coming up and we're going to deep dive on that. But just know now the amount of sleep seriously matters. That's a huge part of recovery. What's also a huge part of recovery and repair is nutrition. And this is actually what I think is one of the trickiest parts of building muscle in your 40s, 50s, and 60s. You can have great training, but as we get older, it's really important to dial in this nutrition aspect so we're eating enough calories so that we actually, your body has the substrate, has the proteins, carbs, fats it needs to actually rebuild tissue, but you can't eat too much because your metabolism is slower, right? If you eat too much, you're just going to put on a lot of extra fat with your muscle. And that's not ideal. You want to have this ideal scenario where you're gaining mostly muscle. Inevitably, some fat will happen because we need to be in a calorie surplus, which effectively means you're eating more calories than you burn each day. And the calorie surplus doesn't need to be huge. It's not like you need to be eating a thousand calories over what you burn every day. But let's take an example, like a 200 pound man on average, that guy, let's just say is moderately active, may burn 2,500 calories per day. So to build muscle, a good calorie target might be 2,700 calories. And I'm not saying you exactly have to track this, but I am really highlighting the importance that a calorie surplus is key for building muscle. You need to have an idea of how many calories you need to eat each day to build muscle. Our team, we create a free muscle building calorie calculator. This is included as part of our old school muscle building program. We actually help you take this calorie calculator and break it down into a step-by-step meal-by-meal nutrition plan, gives you all the recipes and stuff. But also I want to give you access to that even before you join old school muscle and check out the program. It's going to be in the show notes. I'll link you to that. It is actually a Google Excel document where you can hop on that and, and you can enter your numbers and stuff like that. And you can actually see how many calories you need based on your height, your weight, your age, and your activity level. It's a good idea to have a general idea of how many calories you need, because if you're under eating, you're going to be under repairing. And no matter how hard you train, you're not going to be gaining weight. And if you feel like you're a guy that's particularly a hard gainer, it's tough for you to gain weight. You need to be bumping up the calories. So practically speaking, let's talk about how you do that. One of the best ways we like to do that is by using post-workout shakes, because you're probably pretty consistent with having your regular meals. You probably have your meal number one, which is breakfast, or maybe you intermittent fast, but you have that regular first meal of the day and you may have a lunch and you may have a dinner. So how do you make sure you get an extra, let's just say 500 calories or so that's going to put you in that calorie surplus a post-workout shake on top of that is a key strategy. So imagine this, you get done with your workout, then you get a high quality protein powder in your body, something like our Fit Father Super Fuel, which is amazing, by the way. I don't talk about this enough in the podcast, but each scoop of Super Fuel, 20 grams of protein, over 40 different vitamins, minerals, organic superfoods, probiotics. It's got the whole gamut. It tastes amazing. Something like Super Fuel, take a scoop and a half or so, so you're around 30 grams of protein. You add in some healthy carbs, so maybe it's oatmeal, maybe you have some fruit on the side, and maybe you're getting, I'd say for most guys, around 50 grams of carbs, 60 grams of carbs. And that is going to give you an extra, just right there, around 350 to 450 calories, which will be just enough to get you into that calorie surplus. And I also want to say this, I want to bring up the idea of carbohydrates too. It is my personal belief 
that in, in my experience from myself and coaching clients, that if you're trying to build muscle, keeping carbohydrates in the plan are very effective. It's going to be more effective to build muscle if you are including some carbohydrates, particularly post-exercise. That being said, you still can absolutely build muscle on a very low carbohydrate plan on a ketogenic diet or something like that. You just got to make sure you're eating enough healthy fat to get the calories up. Because if you remove any of the main macronutrients, right? Well, most guys know for muscle, you're definitely going to want to keep the protein in there. But if you're cutting out all the carbs or you're cutting out all the fat, it's going to be harder to get those calories in. So I like to have a well-rounded nutrition plan where we're getting proteins, healthy fats, and healthy carbs all together. I prioritize carbs post-workout in the shake. Things like fruit and oatmeal are amazing post-workout carbs. They're not going to fill you up too, too much, and they're going to be amazing. But again, if you are super low carb, you can build plenty of muscle fine. You just got to make sure you're getting your fat target high enough. Without getting into the minutia of the actual grams of proteins, carbs, and fats that you might want, we definitely get into that in old school muscle. And we give you calorie calculators that actually automatically calculate all this for you. So you don't need to do any thinking that's included with old school muscle. I want to give you some general guidelines on how much protein you should have. Because I'm thinking when I'm thinking about a muscle building nutrition plan, you definitely want to prioritize protein in every single meal. So the research backed amount of protein that is great for muscle building is roughly around 0.75 grams of protein per pound of body weight. So a 200 pound man would need around 150 grams of protein, which is very achievable to get, but that ultimately means you're probably getting around 30 to 45 grams of protein in each meal. And maybe you have a post-workout shake that's helping you total up to the rest of that. So what does 30 to 45 grams of protein look like? Well, an average, uh, like let's just say a small, medium-sized chicken breast has around 40 grams. So it doesn't matter that it's chicken. It matters that you're probably pairing one main protein source in each of those uh, meals. So for breakfast, things that work really well for guys who want to build muscle is getting an amazing protein shake using something like Fit Father Superfuel. For other things that are great for breakfast are like having eggs and egg whites. Super, super good, right? Eggs, egg whites, whole eggs, whatever it is, egg protein is very effective for muscle building, getting it out in the morning. For lunch, pairing a protein source uh, with some veggies, with some healthy carbs or healthy fats or a combination. One thing we help guys do is, is knowing that most guys probably need meals for muscle building that are around 600 calories, five, 600 calories per meal. So you're, let's say you're getting three of those a day, that's 1800 calories. Plus maybe you're getting a 500 calorie, uh, post-workout shake plus maybe a snack that's going to total up to around 2,500 to 2,700 calories, which may not be your exact target. You might need a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on your job, your age, et cetera, but it's in the ballpark. And what a 500 calorie meal roughly looks like is if you fill half your, half your plate up, you have a blank plate, half the plate is with veggies. A quarter of that is some kind of main protein serving. And the other quarter are some healthy carbs and or healthy fats. That's it. You can build so many plates. They're going to be around 500 calories. I'm not saying you need to track your calories to the gram, but you should be weighing yourself regularly and seeing the trend up in your weight. And if you're not gaining, I'd say half a pound to a pound per week, then you're probably under eating. I would just bump the food up a little bit in every single meal. So nutrition, we get into all the recipes, all the specifics inside old school muscle. The purpose of this podcast is not to really dial this down for you right now. We have the program. You can join that. It's absolutely incredible. Gives you everything. The purpose here is to have the hot, the bigger picture concept. One other thing that I think is super important to talk about on nutrition for muscle building after 40 is the idea of calorie cycling. So what that means is on days you train, you eat more and on days you don't train, you eat less. This is a way that we can actually make sure that you're building muscle and not packing on fat. And I think the easiest way to do that is using those post-workout shakes, which give you that extra 500 calories on training days. And you just simply don't have the post-workout shake on days you don't train. This is calorie cycling. So on days you train, your calories might hit like 2,700 and on days you don't train, the calories might be lower down to like, let's just say 2,300, 20, 2,200. But that's a really easy way to calorie cycle by using that post-workout shake as that little variable. It's the delta between uh, training day calorie target and regular day calorie target seems to be really effective. Another strategy that's good for guys who want to build muscle, but also lose some fat at the same time is using intermittent fasting. So the idea is that once per week, you can do some intermittent fasting in the form of a dinner to dinner fast. So let's say Saturday night you have dinner and you don't train on Sunday. In this example, you could simply fast until dinner on Sunday. And during that period between 
Saturday dinner and Sunday, when you have dinner on Sunday, that whole fasting period, your body's burning a ton of fat and you're not eating anything. So it actually helps uh, counteract some things. Your body's still recovering because there's benefits to fasting itself, actually breaking down some old proteins and stuff like this. It can help reduce inflammation and can actually help lean you out. So again, this is just expanding on the idea of calorie cycling. Intermittent fasting is another way to do that. And it's a way I think to add a little more fat loss to your muscle building plan. So those are some of the key principles, right? Stimulus repair. When it comes to stimulus, we want to use these training principles we're talking about. And if you want help with this, our old school muscle building program is exactly what you need. There's going to be links in the show notes where you can get that, check that out and join that program. And when it comes to recovery, we have sleep and we have proper nutrition and we're doing things like finding our calorie target, doing some calorie cycling with those post-workout shakes, maybe using some intermittent fasting. These are the foundations. You focus on these, you nail these with your training and your nutrition and recovery, and this is what helps you build muscle. And above all, when you're in your 40s, 50s, and 60s, muscle building is a patient man's game. It is consistent, incremental progress. When it comes to weight loss, you can create a dramatic transformation in a month. You can lose 20, 30 pounds. When it comes to muscle building, it is a consistent, incremental thing. So take progress pictures, track your weights, find many ways to engage yourself in this process through the training journal, through progress pictures, and be consistent. It will pay off for the long haul. Because when you do this and you build age-defying muscle in your 40s, 50s, and 60s, your testosterone levels rise, you have greater muscle mass, energy, and vigor, you just feel better, you feel stronger, and you'll have that muscle mass which will protect your mobility and your way of life in your 60s, 70s, and 80s. So the promise of strength training, it truly is the fountain of youth. We've talked about it in some other episodes. It is an anti-aging miracle. Exercise gives you that. You just got to train smart. So over the course of this Fit Father Project podcast, I want you to tune back in. I want you to listen to interviews of guys who are going through programs like our old school muscle building program and the results they're getting. And I also want you to make sure that you're tuning back in because we're going to have specific episodes covering the right kinds of muscle building supplements for guys in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. I didn't want to cover that in this episode because I want to talk about the foundations. Supplements are supplemental, but they certainly can help what you have the foundations nailed. So we'll talk about that in future episodes. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this episode and got a lot of value from this. But above all, the best way to build muscle is to take action. Get a smart training plan. My team and I would love to help you. Thanks for being here. I'll catch you in future episodes. I'll talk to you very soon.